Up the opening face off, Kindle gets the puck and makes a good read, seeing Cole nicely spread out on the far side of the ice. The execution of the pass, however, is risky and is intercepted. The better play would have been to move the puck to her defense partner or perhaps bank the puck off the horse behind Cole and let him skate into it. Will correctly jumps up on this play, but none of the forwards jump join him. Cole has a chance to drive all the way to the net, but remains elects to remain passive and misses an opportunity. Here we execute our forecheck well and is capped off by Zach being in perfect position at the top of the circle. He gains possession off their turnover and takes a good quick shot, requiring a good save by their goalie. By far, our biggest issue on our breakout is getting our wingers to break down to the hash marks for the outlet pass from the defenseman. A big part of that is anticipation. On this play, Jacob needs to read that Jonathan is going to be bringing the puck to his side and quickly hustle to get open on the boards. Instead, he remains close to the blue line, making an outlet pass difficult. When the forward is ahead of the defenseman, a direct pass is usually impossible. Here we see a perfect execution of the boards passed by Jordan, which results in a two-on-one. Anytime the other team has the boards clogged up, the other side of the ice is likely to be open. As Ian goes back to the puck, he should recognize this, and his teammates, including Nate, should be calling for an overpass rather than trying to jam the puck into an area where a turnover is possible. This sequence is a good illustration of our forecheck and is capped off by Will making an aggressive pinch and getting a scoring chance. Anytime we have our forwards working the triangle with one forward deep and two forwards high, our defense will be able to make this play. Good defensive technique can often lead to an offensive transition. Ian takes a good angle and makes a clean, controlled hit. Separates their player from the puck and creates a two-on-one back the other way. Forcing a pass from behind the other team's net into the slot often referred to as a hold pass. These passes are especially dangerous when the forwards are too close to the net. Here we have all three forwards down low and the pass winds up behind our net. As Will tries to get the puck out of our end, he has no support and the resulting turnover almost costs him the goal. Here we see how good puck support by the winger and center result in an easy breakout. Preston and Roy are in position so the breakout passes are easy to make. On this breakout, Jacob is in better position and is able to make the play out of the zone. This play also illustrates how if he had come down just a couple feet lower, would have had an extra second to make the play and might not have had to ice the puck. Little details will make a big difference for us. Decision making with the puck is critical. Whenever possible, take a look around before the puck comes to you so you can tell whether or not you have time to make the play. Here, Preston ices the puck when he actually had time to make the play. When we get a chance to get the puck deep below their goal line, rifle it. Here we dump it, but right on the stick of their defenseman who is able to immediately send it back out. Here's another example of not getting it deep. Now we are penalty killing in our own zone. When we have a good angle to make a hit, finish the check. Here's a good example of that. If we do it all game, it will wear them down. It is important that when we get a chance to get the puck out of our zone, we not make turn, turn it over. Here a turnover at the blue line results in getting everyone out of position and a good scoring chance for them. Good job clearing the front of the net to mitigate the damage. Here is a nice outlet pass and a great drive to the net. We need to finish these with a goal. On this play, we get pulled out of our box because we don't get the puck out when we get a chance. This is a good scoring chance for them. Now we're going to see good control and protection of your teammates. Everybody stayed in the game and they didn't bother us in front of the net again. This is a better job of staying in box formation with good puck support by the forwards and we get a nice breakout. Another good drive to the net. And again, we need to finish these opportunities when we get a chance. Gap control is key even on a penalty kill. Here our defense are backed in, flat footed and basically stopped by the time their forwards cross the blue line. If they had moved up with the play, they could have controlled their speed a little better. On the power play, we want to control the puck. Generally, we don't want to make long passes because they are easily intercepted. Also, even if our player gets the puck, they are usually by themselves with no support. Here, the defenseman has two close pass options, but they opt for the long pass. Here, a good keep in, putting the puck below their goal line, combined with Cole driving to the net, results in an important goal. This 
time we get a good shot on net, which allows us to set up on the forecheck. Our two forwards get sucked down a little too low. It's actually easy, easier for Ian to get the pass through here if his line mates are out a little further. Unfortunately, the puck comes back through the maze to our defenseman and we get a shot on net. On this play, John needs to move over more to the corner. Their, the player in front is Griffin's responsibility. Griffin should tie up their player, and Don should be in the area of the face-off dot in case we lose the forwards battle. Roy is very well positioned and is here and is able to get the puck out. This is an example of being too soft, and Jonathan doesn't have proper gap control. Don't look down for the puck until you have separated them from the puck with a good clean hit. Also, forwards need to look for open players to pick up on the back check rather than focus on the puck carrier. Ultimately, it's an open player, not the puck carrier, who got the shot on that. Great execution on a three on two with a strong drive to the net, resulting in a pretty goal. On the ensuing face off, we get another good drive to the net. We are still struggling sometimes with positioning in defensive zone face off. Here, John, Preston, and Griffin are properly positioned. Will, the right winger, is lined up where Roy, the left winger, should be. Will should be outside of Jonathan. As soon as the puck is dropped, Roy should go through to their left defenseman, and Will should go out to the right defenseman. On the following face-up on the other side, everything should be a mirror image. Instead, John lines up in the middle. He should be on the boards on the hash mark, and Will move in front where Griffin is standing. Everyone else is positioned uh, correctly. On this play, Zach gets in great position for the breakout. This good decision allows him to easily get the puck out. If Cole or Ian had curled down a little closer to him, an easy short pass would have been an option as well. Shortly after, we see Preston get in the same position and a nice outlet pass from Griffin. Again, his line mates start to leave the zone, which requires another long pass. Better puck support would have one of his line mates swing down for an easier pass. For the third straight breakout, we get the winger down low enough to make the play. Zach makes a good decision to chip the puck past the defenseman, ensuring that we don't turn over the puck at our blue line and we get a two-on-one. Little things are the difference between a scoring chance for them and a scoring chance for us. Nice 4-2 win, Ice Hawks.